This is the plaintiff, Julia Tyson. She says she bought her old car back from the defendant, but when she got it, it reeked of pot, and the defendant never gave her the title back. Then, just last week, the defendant snuck onto her property and stole the car from her. This is a crazy back-and-forth case. She has no other choice but to sue her here for the $2,128.50 she's owed and hopes the judge sees things her way. This is the defendant, Kiara Sessions. She says the car's in her name. It's her car. And the plaintiff's causing her undue stress. That's right. If anyone's owed money here today, it's not the plaintiff. It's her. Bottom line, she's pretty sure the judge will see her side of things today. Because she has all the proof and evidence to show this car's hers, not the plaintiff's. She's accused of going back and forth. All parties, please raise your right hands. You see it, come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome, Julia in. Tyson, you are suing Kiara Sessions for $2,128.50 that you say she owes you for a vehicle. Let's hear from you first. What happened here? Okay. First, I purchased a uh, child, but in the process, I sold Kiara. How uh, did you know Kiara? Okay, I knew her through her mother. Her mother and I used to work together. Also, okay. I used to work with her grandmother, too. Okay. So she needs a car, and you're selling a car. Right. And you're selling a car. Why? Well, because I had purchased, or I Another thought one. I or purchased you thought a you had purchased. What is okay. you thought you had purchased? Well, my paperwork, they put the wrong information down from what I gave them. So they falsified my, uh, my income. The car dealership. The Tower. car dealership falsified your income. Right. Okay. And I didn't find that. So you didn't out. get financing that you were expecting. Right. Yeah. So that you was... sell her the car for how much? Five hundred. How old was this car? It's two thousand two. Two thousand and two. What? Chevy Blazer. Chevy Blazer. Mm -hmm. At the time that we that I sold it to Kiera, we did not do any paperwork like a receipt or whatever. Why not? Think of it. She would like a well, you're the daughter. person buying a car without knowing if you have a new yeah. car. But anyway, yeah. so I know why not. But all right. But, I, but I there's just, no question she paid you $500. Right. And then you sold her the car. What'd you right. do with the car once you had it? Um, I began to drive it. Did you register it in your name? I did. Did you insure it? I did. Okay. Is it presently in your name? It is. All right. And then at some point you realize you don't have financing and you want your car back. No, ma'am. Okay. What happened there? She called me. And said, she said, well, Ms. Tyson, do, uh, do you want your car back? I said, no. I said, it wouldn't be fair to me to take the car back from you just because the other deal fell through. So she said, well, I already have a car. So keep you from being without transportation. I'll sell it back to you. Did that happen? No. What happened according to you? Well, what happened was she wow. called my mom. Um, and told my mom what happened, right. but she also reached out to me. Um, I felt bad, um, you know, for her. Um, she, I, she did ask, you know, could she have the car back? And I told her no, because I purchased, purchased the car with someone else and we'd be using it for a business. So the decision was not just on me. Um, when I talked to um, Shanikra, she said, you know, she Who's didn't Shanikra feel- Shanikra to you? She's my um, friend and also business partner. Come on up, and what business are you guys in? Um, it's a um, our energy drink company. Okay. So we would be using it to, you know, make deliveries mm -hmm. um, for the company. And I came to her about it. You know, I'm more of the one that's like, you know, well, she's you not going to have a car. You don't need a reason for not wanting to return a car that you bought. You bought it. You registered <laughs> right. your name. You're, you don't that. need to explain this to me any further. So right. what happens then? So I agreed to let her, you know, use the car in the meantime until she was able to get proper documents to finance another one. You know, feeling sorry for her. But it turned out that she really was trying to basically just trick me into getting the title back into her name because what she said was that she needed the title to be able to get insurance. Because I told her, I don't mind you driving it until you get another car, but I'm not going to pay for the insurance if I'm not driving it. She agreed that she was. Stop well, this picking. is so messy. Why, why return the car to her at all? Well, not return because it her, her Right, but her story is very different. She says, she, according to you, you bought back the car? 
Yes, she so she Who what happened? That? She called. She called me. So when she called me and uh, said, "Do I want the car back?" I told her no. So then how did you said, get the car back? I, well, later on, she said, "Well, Miss Tyson, I got uh, I got a car." I, I got a car, but to keep you from being without one, I'll sell it back to you. After she already went through the trouble of registering it and everything else? Right. All right, so according to you, she sells it back to you. You paid her how much? I ended up paying her a total of a six, seven fifty. How come? Because the 500 for the purchase? 500 for the purchase. And then she said on her title to get the tag, she had to pay 250 and so to keep just from going through a lot of mess, I just paid the seven fifty. Do you have a receipt for the seven fifty? No, ma'am. Only thing I have is a bank statement for the five. You know where I made a withdrawal. Well, around that's better that than time. nothing. But uh, you know, uh, why wouldn't? Why would you let go of seven hundred and fifty dollars? Watch this. Did she give you seven hundred and fifty dollars? Mm -mm. No. Did she give you five hundred? No. Did she pay you a penny? when you returned that car to her in order to purchase it from you? No. Th this is the thing. When I sold her the car, we didn't exchange a receipt then. I thought when she sold it back, everything would run just as smooth. I know. I know. No, I mean, Get do you me. watch a people's court? Oh, yes, ma'am. Maybe mm. not enough, because I've been yeah. saying for the last 20 years that cash doesn't leave this hand mm. without a receipt coming right. into this hand. Right. And she's looking at me right in the face and saying you didn't buy the car back. <laughs> in fact, what you end up doing is you take the car back from her, right? Because you well, got an extra it. key. Right. I took the car back because why, she... Why did you take the car back? Because she stopped answering my calls. Tell, ask, tell me this. Why would you let her drive the, the car even? Because she is a friend of my mom's, and I'm not just... How'd you feel about that? That was a car purchase for your business. <laughs> so what, what if she crashes it? Um, from the beginning, I told her no. I told her don't give the car back because, I mean, we got it at a good deal. We did our part um, as far as getting the insurance, getting it registered. So I felt like it was ours. And So now it's registered under your name and it's insured under your name. And then what if she has a car accident? Why would you give it to her at all? Did you say no, don't give it to her? I did, but Kiera... Her heart is too good. Oh, it's always, whenever oh, someone God. does something stupid, they <laughs> always say, I mean, it's reckless. If you're a business owner, yeah, you need to make yeah. good decisions. Yeah. It is reckless to do that, all right? So then it's registered right now under whose name? Under yours? Correct. All right, and then according to you, how long after you loan her the car are you saying you gotta return the car and she's ignoring you? Um, it was a couple of weeks later. Okay, and do you ever share that, hey, she's not returning the car with your friend here? Yeah, I told her. What did she say to you? She said, um, Miss Tyson is not returning my calls about the car. And I'm like, Kiera, why did you give her the car? We, you know, the back and forth. Oh, so that was that a surprise to you that she had ended up giving her the car? Yes. Oh. It was. It was a surprise because I tried to talk her out of doing it because I just didn't feel like it was a good idea anyway. Um, and so when she told me she wasn't answering, I'm like, so, so what are we going to do about it? And what did you decide? You decided you'd find where the car was and use your extra Korean and take it back. Right. All right. And did the police get involved? I called the police. And then the police come, and what did the police say? And the police told me, since I don't have a receipt or title, that nothing I can do about it. I had to play it out in court. Mm -hmm. When I originally had the Chevy, I kept it in good condition. It may not have looked like Dolly Parton on the outside, but it ran like Dolly Parton. <laughs> <laughs> I never look on the outside. <laughs> <laughs> when do you say you, okay, first of all, when do you say you bought it back? Gen in January. It, it, it was in January. Right, but do you understand the withdrawals that you are circling are February 4th? That's the exchange of the money where I went and withdrew it out of the bank. To right, but how do I not know that these are just regular withdrawals? Because compared to the uh, time. Well, the time is off. If you sold it back oh. to her in January, these are circled in February. No. I so how would I know that I think these I, didn't are... I, okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. But anyway, here's our last text message. And I was through about playing with her bad thing in. Oh, you have texts? I got this. No, no, yeah, yeah. Give me all the texts you okay. got. I want to see it right in the phone. This right here. Got tired of going back and forth about the title. Also, here's a... And, and what this time is, and where? Just a minute. Okay. Bring other key. I need it. Mm -hmm. Why would she say that? 
Okay, so this is the thing. She was basically telling me that in order for her to get insurance in her name, that she had to switch the vehicle back into her name. My mom told me that she felt like that was just a a trick. A ruse to get the that car back in her name. That was a way to get name. the title back in her name so that I wouldn't get it back. Okay. So then she said she then she said that she was having issues, but she was basically saying that she felt like the other key worked better in the car. And so I just and kept then once like, you got bring the other key I needed. I'm like, and why she? Get, well, you she just don't... started to think it seemed tanky. Welcome back to the People's Court. Harvey Levin here. So, good idea, bad idea for a friend to sell another friend his or her used car. I say terrible. Why? Because there could be something wrong with it. You can't always trust the person. And like, what if something happens? Can you blame them? That just gets awkward. What do, you, what do you say? I think it's the worst idea ever. Ever? <laughs> never do money between friends. It's never a good idea. Any transaction. You're going to be the tiebreaker. I completely agree. It's the worst idea. Why? If something goes wrong with the car, the friend could get mad about it. It could ruin the relationship. But that's on the friend, right? I mean, if, the, if, if you're reasonable and you're selling the car, it's on the friend, right? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I would stick I with I would stick with it's the worst idea. I wouldn't yeah. take the chance. Okay, good. We're going inside the courtroom. On your lawsuit against her, you don't have a receipt for buying the car right. back. You don't have proof of a mm -hmm. January withdrawal. You just have, and these could be withdrawals for anything. That doesn't mm -hmm. prove to me that you bought the car back. Mm -hmm. When someone buys a car back, mm -hmm. they have a title signed mm -hmm. over to them, just mm -hmm. like you did for her. Mm -hmm. And they they should have some paperwork, but okay, you don't, you didn't, you didn't have the paperwork. There should be some trail that shows that you bought the car back. I've got a very strong story there that why on earth would they sell you the car back? They're not, I don't want to sell you, they got a good deal, they got a reason they want it, they don't want the car to be sold back to you. The circumstances under which it gets taken back kind of show to me that, you know, what are they gonna do, steal a car that they sold you? And then you naturally assuming that she had taken the car back and instead of calling the police because I you have a stolen car, it's kind of weird. I but the bottom line is it's a simple okay. case. You need to prove you bought the car back and you can't. So my verdict in this case is for the defendant. Wow. Wow. Come on. So it ends up a zero, zero tie, really, effect here in the people's court. Ms. Tyson, yeah. you'll step over here. What do you think of the judge's decision now? You, you, you lost, totally. Yeah, but if she... Presented all the evidence. What do I need a title? You, you need. I mean, wait, wait a minute. Why would I need a title to get insurance? Bottom line is, the uh, car's in her name. I know. And it. you couldn't prove you bought it back. Yeah. You didn't have proof. But she didn't have proof that she bought it for me. I know. Neither one of you had the evidence. <laughs> you that know. Nobody wrote receipts right. or anything. So, but that, that's okay. That, well, yeah. That's what the yes. judge believed. You know, see, she didn't even let me show where I went to try to get she, the title. She didn't need it. She didn't need it. All right. Okay. I'm sorry it ended up That's that way for you. Yeah. You know, I don't know what's going to happen now. Here comes Miss Sessions. You know, she's been friends with your grandmother going a long time going yeah. back. Yeah, and my mother as well. Yeah, and your mom. Yeah, and I have a sensitive spot for older people, but she just taught me that older people can, you know, be a little fraudulent, and she's just a, a older fraud queen, if you ask me. Okay. Thank you very much. No Sorry problem. it ended up this way for you, okay? Thank you. No, I'm happy. I, I won. I'm good. Okay. I'm going to get it washed tonight. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Going to get it washed tonight. <laughs> good for you. We'll have a clean car. Harvey? Okay, well, I agree with everybody back here that it's a bad idea to sell to a friend generally, but if you're going to do it, what you should do is both of you go to a mechanic, a neutral mechanic who can look at the car and lay out, here's what's wrong with it, if anything, so it's eyes wide open.